I think that uh, we're here to honor the legacy of a studio, the legacy of a family, the Lameless, that, and the legacy of the craftsmen and artist that gave birth to what I think is the modern horror film. Uh, these men took the visual tradition of expressionist films and uh, not only updated but transformed it into what we now understand to be the basics of what a horror film should be. Today's film is for me extremely important, Bride of Frankenstein, the first one we're going to see. Uh, I recommend the whole series. If you're a monster kid, and I am, uh, my mother is here to attest to that. I, I, I think that we find out that uh, the films we love uh, are uh, truly emotional uh, biographies and partially prophecies of who we are and who we can be. And this is also true of the men who made them. And if the first one was about the essential loneliness of man, a Miltonian episode about being thrusted into a world that uh, you didn't create and didn't understand, then the second one is the absolute compulsion for company, the need not to be alone. And uh, through the uh, movie, we will see the monster try that companionship with different figures that either adopt him or reject him in different terms. And ultimately, the most beautiful act the most uh, profound act the monster can do, which is acquiring uh, his first choice, doing his first willed decision, which leads to the immortal words, we belong dead. That is the first time the monster is not just a victim of circumstance or thrown around by the world that he doesn't understand. It's the first time he stands tall and tells the world what he needs to be, what he wants to be. Tonight's movie is a very special film because of the clash of many talents. James Whale, who was an incredible visualist and an incredible director in, in every respect, but who was also cynical and uh, cold sometimes, far more removed from emotion in many of his movies. He had an almost entomological view of mankind in some of his uh, other horror movies, but he is palliated by the incredible talents of Boris Karloff, who understands, like Whale, uh, what it is to be an outsider, since he had uh, in him um, foreign blood that was, in his own biography, uh, a very hard uh, legacy to carry in, 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 in his native England. Whale also understood that and in, in many ways rejected uh, Karloff in some manner because he saw himself in him. And Karloff found an, a great ally in Jack Pierce. Now, Jack Pierce is a mythic makeup artist and, in my opinion, the one that gives birth to what we understand as the modern makeup artist, a legacy that has been passed to uh, Dick, Dick Smith, Rick Baker, Rob Bottin, um, William Tuttle, John Chambers, many, many, many others. He uh, created the monster with exacting attention to detail. And the variations that he does between the first uh, creature makeup and the second are astonishing, uh, especially if you think of the medium and the resources he had. Uh, the creature also evolves through the film and his look uh, grows and grows uh, to represent uh, the journey and the wear, I think, of Karloff and the creature through the film. And the beautiful moment at the end, which in some ways uh, uh, address the bride of Frankenstein, almost as the cold, uncaring future, and the creature as the past, trying to connect. That moment in which the creature understands what Sartre said so beautifully, that hell is others, uh, is only aided by Pierce's creation. Uh, a perfect score, perfect cinematography, and in many, many other ways, just a perfect movie. Uh, gives birth to this beautiful cycle that I hope you enjoy during the week and not just come for the big hits, but see also the less uh, well-known uh, films. I, for me, it's an incredibly important movie because I've been a misfit and a freak of a very large size all my life. <laughs> and the moment I discovered the creature, I discovered in him a twin soul. And in his suffering and in his disfranchisement emotionally, I found a kindred spirit. 